Today we're going to complete your in-service training on the Echinos Bladder Scanner system. The Echinos Bladder Scanner combines ultrasound and artificial intelligence to provide you with a powerful diagnostic tool. Now, our bladder scanner probably uses a different technique than what you're used to, so make sure you watch this video in its entirety to ensure that you're using best practice. I'm Matt Wall, I'm a nurse and clinical educator with Echinos, a company that develops intelligent medical tools to empower you, nurses and healthcare providers, to enhance the way that you deliver medical care. Let's review what you will learn in this training. First, we'll complete an introduction to the bladder scanner. We'll review how to complete a bladder scan and discuss the requirements of a good image. We'll look at best practice for fanning the ultrasound probe and some common pitfalls and error warnings. And we'll finish up by discussing how you can overcome some challenging situations with the scanner. Press the power button to turn on the device and to display the Echinos home screen. The home screen may or may not display the ultrasound imaging and vascular access options. This will be based on the settings set by your individual institution. The training video library houses multiple videos that provide a quick review of device operations. This is a great resource I like to use when you need a quick refresher or if you ever need to teach a new user. Scan review is where saved exams will be stored. To complete a bladder scan, select bladder volume. Then select the appropriate patient type. Normal should be used for patients with a BMI under 30. Pediatric for pediatric patients 27 kilograms or less. Deep with patients of a BMI of 30 or greater, or if scar tissue is present, and pregnant for active pregnancy. For this scan, we will select normal. Lay the patient as flat as can be tolerated. If necessary, palpate the patient's pubic bone, apply the gel, and position the probe about an inch above the pubic bone with the orientation marker facing towards the patient's head. Apply pressure firmly. Tilt the portion of the probe in contact with the patient 15 to 20 degrees towards the feet. Select Scan. When the bladder has been found, an orange outline will appear around the bladder. The pubic bone indicator will appear as a green curved line. Maintaining pressure and angle, fan the probe towards one hip until the sound indicator is heard and the arrow appears. Then fan back towards the other hip until a second sound is heard. Make sure not to slide the probe when fanning. The bladder volume will appear on the display. If the bladder is fully outlined and the pubic bone indicator is present, no further scans are needed. Following a successful scan, press Done and enter any requested information. You can either save the scan or discard it. If the bladder is not found right away, the system may prompt you to re-angle the probe towards the patient's head or down towards the patient's feet. It may also prompt you to apply firmer pressure or more gel. Additionally, do not fan too fast or too slow. Maintain consistent pace and pressure during the scan. As a guideline, a complete fan should take around 3 to 5 seconds. If the greater than symbol appears along with the volume measures, there are some actions that can be helpful. Make sure the bladder is centered on the screen and that you are fanning the probe towards one hip until the sound's indicator is heard and an arrow is seen. Then fan back towards the other hip until a second sound is heard to capture the entire bladder. Anchor the probe to ensure that it does not slide in any direction while fanning. If the phrase twisting is detected appears, you should rescan, taking care not to rotate the probe during the fanning motion, making sure the orientation marker remains pointing towards the patient's head. Note, a true low volume bladder scan will present with a clear pubic bone indicator and a clear visualization of a small empty bladder on the screen. Did you catch all that? It's okay if you didn't, but there are a few key points I really want to make sure that you get right, because if you miss them, you're not going to get accurate bladder volume readings. The first thing is the probe marker. Make sure this gray line of the probe marker goes towards the patient's head. You want to place it two fingers above the pubic bone and in line with the belly button, and remember to tilt the probe so it's looking downward at the patient's bladder. Now the next thing I really want to make sure you get right 
is the image of the bladder. So let's go ahead and set up our device. We're going to select bladder volume and I'll select the normal preset and we have a practice bladder here. All right, I have my probe with the gray line or the probe marker. So if the patient's head is here, it's going to be facing the patient's head. I'll place it on our practice bladder and I'll go ahead and select scan. Now a lot of people feel rushed to start scanning right away when in fact you have plenty of time to line up the bladder and get the perfect image. So what does the perfect image have? It's going to have your bladder centered on the screen and the green line indicating that the pubic bone is detected. Now sometimes if you put the, the probe on the patient, your bladder isn't going to be perfectly centered in the screen. What you may see is that the bladder is actually partially cut off. So you need to make sure that you're recentering by angling the probe back until the bladder is perfectly centered in the screen, then you can go ahead and do your fan. Now that we know how to get a good image of the bladder, we want to perfect the fanning technique. And the first thing is how you hold the probe. A lot of people kind of want to fully grip the probe when you really should hold it more like a pencil. And this is going to allow a larger range of motion with your fanning. The next thing is that when you're fanning, you want to watch your hands, not the screen. This is going to prevent you from sliding. So let's look at a normal fan. So I'll hit scan. I've found the bladder and I'm going to go ahead and fan all the way to one side until it dings and then into the other direction. Perfect. So where people go wrong is that when they're fanning, instead of sticking to one spot, they slide the probe, which kind of smears the image as you're, as you're doing your fan. So make sure you stick to one spot, fan from hip to hip, and don't complete a, a U or a twisting, just one spot, and then a lateral movement from side to side. You may encounter a few challenging situations with the bladder scanner. So we'll talk about a few techniques that can help you overcome them. The first is with patients with excess abdominal fluid, and this could either be from ascites or it could be amniotic fluid with pregnant patients. You wanna make sure that you're selecting the deep setting, so you're increasing the depth at which the bladder scanner is gonna look for that bladder. And you also wanna make sure that you're using firm pressure on the probe. The next is patients with excess abdominal skin. Um, you may need to grab a teammate to help you pull back that extra skin so that way you can position the probe under that area. And then lastly, some patients have scar tissue or a wound or abdominal mesh that's kind of blocking the position where you would normally place the ultrasound probe. Um, in this instance, you either want to go just above or below that area and then change the angle of the probe so that you're still able to find the bladder and centralize it in that ultrasound image. And hopefully that will help you out. Thank you for watching our training video and choosing the Echinos Bladder Scanner system. Now it's time to get out there and do a couple practice scans. Remember, if you have questions, you can always rewatch this video. You could watch a video on the training video library, or you could reach out to your local Echinos nurse educator. Thank you and happy scanning.